Coming up on Chapman News, graduation is just around the corner and we asked some seniors on campus if their investment has paid off. Plus, we take a gander and meander on Proposition 47 and its effects on Old Town residents. And we have special guest Megan Davis here live in studio to talk about her drive to end epilepsy. All this and more coming up on Chapman News. Hola everyone, happy Cinco de Mayo and welcome to Chapman News. I'm Michael Hofling. And I'm Wolfie Tash. Now, Michael, first of all, I'm going to let you just sit here and think about it. I'm going to go with the first story and you can think about what you've done because, you know, actions have consequences. I buddy. understand. You tried. I understand. You tried. Thanks. Nice job. Orange County surfers, be warned. A shark attacked a swimmer at San Onofre this past Saturday, leaving the Vista woman in critical condition. This marks the second shark attack in Orange County waters in the past year. Now, the question turns to why. Shark attacks are rare in these waters. However, experts point to new hotspots near several popular surf areas, and the sharks like the hotspots. Marine officials are tagging sharks where they can, but of course urge caution when swimming in the water. The big West Coast surf contest in San Onofre in two weeks has had no cancellations yet. Jim Mazo, a vice chairman of the Chapman Board of Trustees, is on trial for 13 counts of insider trading charges. In late 2008, Mazo was the CEO of vision care company Advanced Medical Optics. He is accused of providing insider information on former Angels player Doug DeCince about the rising stock prices of his company. Closing arguments concluded Wednesday of the eight-week-long trial in Santa Ana. The jury began its deliberation Wednesday and it's expected to reach a decision within the next couple of days. As graduation approaches, seniors like myself here at Chapman debate whether their four years here were worth the investment. Chapman University has once again been listed in Kiplinger's Personal Finance Magazine as one of the nation's 100 best private universities, this time at number 84. We decided to go out and see if graduating seniors at Chapman University thought their four years at Chapman was a good investment. Yeah, it definitely was. I feel like I met a lot of really good people and took a lot of interesting classes and I've learned a lot overall. So I'm a double major with strategic and corporate comm and dance performance and so I think both those departments really prepared me not only getting internships um, and hopefully jobs when I graduate. I am a peace studies major and minor in philosophy and religion and I've learned so much and feel I know so much more about the world in all of those areas now than I did when I came into college. Also meeting professors and kind of making those relationships and those connections um, definitely help in just your schooling and also in the future. I definitely think a chapter prepared me adequately for the quote unquote real world. And I was definitely prepared for my next step in two weeks or three weeks. So yeah, I think it was. Well, there you have it. Most seniors here at Chapman University think their money went to a good place. In the meantime, I still have two more years. I'm Allison Moses with Chapman News. In the last two months, Orange has seen two SWAT team responses, an attempted armed bank robbery and home break-ins. Reporter Molly Casey sat down with the Orange police chief for an update on crime in Old Town. I just felt like this very eerie feeling, like someone had been there. Imagine coming home to find your important personal belongings gone. Um, and so I went to my room, and my computer was gone. I went to the table, my purse was gone, I had my wallet in it, it had literally like my entire life in it. And, and not just once, but twice. Again, my computer had been stolen from my room, and my roommate's computer had been stolen as well. Statistics say one in 46 residents will become a victim of crime in Old Town Orange, leaving residents like Tyler questioning Assembly Bill 109 and Proposition 47. Passed in 2011, Assembly Bill 109 means low-level offenders stay in county jail to serve their sentence instead of state jail. And Proposition 47 reduces certain felonies to misdemeanors and allows those already serving time to petition the court for resentencing. And that kind of makes me feel like if someone, if they find the person that did it, they might do it again. Tyler isn't alone in her concern over Prop 47 and AB 109. Orange Police Chief Tom Casella says that these now misdemeanors make punishment that much less of a threat. Where we used to be able to book them into county jail, get them off the streets, we now issue them a citation. Chief Casella says that despite the rate of crime in Orange jumping 28% from 2015 to 2016, it's since dropped. 
last year we had a decrease of 7.5% from uh, 16 through 17. And while Chief Casella says he doesn't see AB 109 or Prop 47 being repealed, residents can take steps to protect themselves. Lock your doors of your car, um, <laughs> secure your house at night, and just be aware. Uh, or go with Tyler's plan. We got a new lock system, and we also had a new alarm system. But... From Orange, I'm Molly Casey, Chapman News. This morning, joining us in the studio is Megan Davis, organizer of the Paint the Town Purple, a gala to end epilepsy. Megan, thank you so much for being in studio with us thank today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. I just have a really quick question. Yes. Um, what is epilepsy, and why is it such an important cause for you? So epilepsy itself is two or more unprovoked seizures. Um, one in 10 people will have a seizure in his or her lifetime, but one in 26 people are actually diagnosed with epilepsy. Um, it's very important to me because I myself have epilepsy. I um, was diagnosed my freshman year of college, so around your guys' age, and so it's something that affects my world, my family, my friends, and um, I'd like to change the fact that there's no cure. Well, you're certainly making great strides. Uh, epilepsy has affected my family as well. My grandmother had epilepsy for many years while I was growing up, and I yeah. saw firsthand kind of what it, the tolls it took on her. And it's really sad. So, you know, we want to just first off, you know, you're doing really a good thing here, and I think well, all of us you. here can really get behind this uh, concept. Now, the Paint the Town Purple event, how did you come up with this idea to help spread the word? So I can't take all the credit. The Epilepsy Foundation of L.A. has a program in place that's called the LA Care and Cure. And um, my husband and I, as you know, um, it affects the family. And my husband and I really wanted to do something. And I said, babe, we got to do something about my epilepsy because it was getting worse after I had my son. Mm -hmm. So um, I always admired that program. It provides fellowships for epileptologists, it, excuse me, and epilepsy specific training. And so I asked them if they would be interested in expanding that program down to Orange County and rolling that out. There are over 32,000 people in Orange County that are diagnosed with epilepsy. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there are more people with epilepsy than Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and cerebral palsy combined and nobody realizes that. Wow. Yeah, so Paint the Town Goodness. Purple is the title for the evening because purple is the color for epilepsy. Yeah. And we're gonna raise funds. Actually, we have a little bit of a different twist. We're going to provide fellowships um, for a combination, um, chalk and UCI Medical um, for epilepsy-specific neurosurgeons. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we're gonna expand to epileptologists. So it's, oh. it's gonna be incredible because there's, um, the need for care is so large uh, for adults and children that this is hopefully going to make a difference because this is our only way towards a cure right now. We don't have um, we don't have a cure. So well, the plan seems to be in place. Seems like a pretty good step you guys are taking. What are some common misconceptions about epilepsy? Common misconceptions about epilepsy. Well, uh, you can't be normal and have epilepsy. I had four seizures last night, so you wouldn't probably look at me and think that that's happening, but um, it can affect anyone. Everyone has a threshold, so um, epilepsy is not something that has to be unique to a particular person. It can happen um, at any time. Um, but people with epilepsy can lead really full lives, but it can also tremendously impact uh, someone who has so much to give and yet just doesn't have the physical or mental capability because of something they can't control. So that's what we're really working towards is being able to provide a better quality of life with more highly skilled and trained um, epilepsy specific professionals. Megan, thank you so much again for taking the time to join us. Thank you have supporters you. here at Chapman News behind Absolutely. your cause. Awesome. Continue to do what you're doing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Coming up, Robert Rosenfeld is going to make us all smarter once again, and this time, Siri might be getting smarter as well. Plus, one student is finding ways to overcome a life-changing diagnosis. And if you're looking for a break from the heat, well, we're looking at a cooler temperature this weekend. Um, it's 70 degrees, and I'll have the rest of the forecast coming up on Chapman News. 
our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right. I said it. Follow your dreams. Chapman University. Take your life to new heights. Chapman University. Invest your humanity. Lead. Apple Siri has long been criticized for being inaccurate and un unhelpful, but rumors of a new Apple product could mean big changes are coming to the virtual assistant. Robert Rosenfeld explains what we may see from Apple next month and more on this week's Week in Tech. Amazon and Google are fighting very hard to be your virtual assistant of choice, but now it looks like Apple is going to be joining that fight. An analyst for KGI Securities says that there's about a 50% chance that we could see the debut of a long-rumored Apple smart speaker at this year's Worldwide Developer Conference next month. The speaker supposedly would function similar to that of an Amazon Echo or Google Home, but it would have the brain power of Apple Siri, and it would tightly integrate in with Apple's smart home system called HomeKit. The device is rumored to retail north of $200, but it would contain some pretty good built-in speakers. If Apple was to release this smart speaker, WWDC would be a good time to do so, as it would give developers time to ready their applications to work with this new supposed smart speaker for a launch apparently happening sometime this fall. Microsoft, a company very focused on the business market, is once again turning its attention back to the classroom with a slew of new products aimed at teachers and students. The big announcement from a company event on Wednesday was the Surface Laptop, a sleek and slim 13.5 inch laptop with USB ports, SD card slots, and a tight integration with Windows S, Microsoft's new version of Windows tailored specifically for the educational environment. The new addition to the Surface device family is receiving a lot of good press from tech pundits, and you don't have to be a student or a teacher to buy one. Anyone on the hunt for a decent spec laptop with supposedly a crazy good battery life should consider the Surface laptop when it's released on June 15th. If you are just dying to know the details about the next iPhone, or you have a burning question about your Mac that you just want answered, you might be able to ask Apple CEO Tim Cook yourself, but you'll need a few hundred thousand dollars to do so. The Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights is once again partnering with Apple to auction off a one-hour lunch with the CEO. The highest bidder will have lunch with Tim Cook at the brand new Apple Park campus in Cupertino, and it should be noted that though lunch is provided, travel accommodations are not. But seeing as the current bid is well over $100,000, that probably won't be a problem for the highest bidder. The lunch meeting with Cook has raised the center over $1.6 million in the past few years, with this year's winner potentially putting that figure at well over $2 million. Better start checking your couch cushions now. Bidding ends on May 16th. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and that's The Week in Tech. A big splash is coming to the Great Park in Irvine. The Wild River Water Park in Irvine that closed back in 2011 after the end of a 25-year lease with the Irvine Company is returning. The Irvine City Council, also acting as the Orange County Great Park Board, plans to bring back the iconic Orange County landmark, this time making it bigger and better. It will take up 30 acres of space and will include an uphill water coaster, river rapids, a lazy river, a wave pool, and structures for children. The park is working with Wild Rivers President Mike Riddell to start the construction on the $50 million project. The park could be open to the public as soon as May of 2019. Hey Wolfie, hasn't it seemed like a while since we had that whole um, homeless riverbed fiasco with the, the city and they had yeah. to move to the other side? It has been a while since they did that and it's, it's such a shame to me because people were literally being taken from the homes that they built up some months, years in the making. Yeah. and. It was a real shame, but I heard that there's a, a new center for these people to live in and start oh, nice. new homes in. Yeah, that's definitely something that could uh, help them out.
Chloe May is there now and she has more details. Chloe? Thanks guys, I'm here at the new Kramer Place Homeless and Service Center in Anaheim, which is the county's first year round and 24 seven homeless shelter that's located near the 91 freeway and Kramer Boulevard. And honestly, just a huge step in working towards finding housing for the thousands of homeless people currently on the streets in the county, especially with the recent Santa Ana Riverbed incident with many people having to um, you know, be kicked out and relocate. This shelter is going to be consisting of 200 beds and today actually the first 20 people are expected to move in and um, every day from now on uh, that same number of people are going to come in until they fill the first initial 100 beds. The um, it's not completely uh, complete yet, but in about one year, they're going to be having restrooms, they're going to be having um, 100 more beds, and also an on-site health clinic and kitchen. Uh, meals are going to be provided by volunteers, and also their, um, the occupants here are going to have resources tailored to their needs, so um, whether that's you know reconnecting with family or um, getting professional housing services, they're going to be um, helping homeless people from 15 different communities in the northern Orange County area, which is amazing, and um, the first 100 people are going to be able to stay here for up to 100 a day, 180 days. So this is a really big day for Kramer Place and truly a big day in just fighting the homelessness crisis um, currently right now in the Orange County area. Um, but I'm so excited to be here and to be a part of it and um, reporting from the new homeless shelter in Anaheim. This has been Chloe Way with Chapman News and I'll throw it back to you guys. Thanks, Chloe. Wow, Michael, that is... Uh Absolutely amazing right there. That shelter looks like it's going to be helping a lot of people and creating a lot of new homes for families. Absolutely, and it's people who need the help and to get back up on their feet, and it's just absolutely great to see people taking initiative and helping people out. It really is, and kudos to them for getting 100 more beds within the coming 100 days, and you know, best of luck to you and your endeavors going forward. Many high schoolers have big dreams of playing college sports. For seasoned high school athletes, this may seem like a sure reality, but for one freshman at Chapman, the future took an unexpected turn. I'm familiar with the famous cliche that there's more than meets the eye. But for Chapman freshman Ivan Panate, a passionate athlete and dedicated and involved student, one diagnosis changed the course of a life. To the average onlooker, Ivan's battle with multiple sclerosis goes unseen. Multiple sclerosis MS, it's basically just a disease that latches on to the nervous system in the brain. It basically attaches to like nerves within the brain and kind of like stops it. So for me, it, it, I think it attaches to the right side of my brain, so obviously the left side. So when it, ha when it first happened, I'd get a numbness in the left side of my body. Multiple sclerosis is a disabling and progressive neurological disease that in severe cases can leave patients paralyzed. For Ivan, the biggest loss brought by MS was basketball. I was originally planning to play uh, basketball for another school and then all of a sudden, boom, MS, senior year, couldn't play. It used to be so big for me. I used to play every single day. Despite the changes brought by MS, Ivan remains optimistic. Managing his symptoms with treatment, he doesn't let his diagnosis hold him back from getting the most out of college life. He's involved in numerous clubs and organizations, achieves good grades, and still fits in basketball on the side. I feel like it's, it's the, the MS was a blessing and a curse. It kind of brought me to where I am today, but it sucked that I couldn't play the game that I loved. Though MS will follow Ivan into the future, it's not stopping him from having big dreams. Whether it's becoming a lawyer or a politician or a teacher or a basketball player, I feel like no matter what Ivan does, he's going to do it well and it's going to change the world and it's going to give back and it's just ultimately going to be good. From the basketball courts, this has been Andrea Kurt And Ivan Panate. Chapman News. Hey, Michael, you're looking really hot, man. Oh, my God. You know, I tried to look good today. You're looking pretty handsome yourself. Well, I, no, I mean, just like you had some sweat, like, coming off right here. So it just, I kind of seem like maybe you were a little hot. Maybe it's the lights. I don't know. Maybe it's me being next to you. I mean, Well, that's disappointing. I'm sorry. Speaking of heat, we have Sabrina Santoro in the Weather Center ready to give us the forecast. Sabrina? Thanks, Michael and Wolfie. You know, there's no heat over here. It's actually a nice 70 degrees today. We do have some clouds coming in, and we're going to have even more cloud coverage going into the night, and temperatures are going to be dropping to about 60 degrees. And those clouds that I mentioned, they're going to be here to stay for the next couple of days. And looking at the Orange County forecast, we've got moderate to um, mild temperatures. We've got temperatures in the high 60s, 
70 degrees inland um, in Orange, Irvine, and Mission Viejo. And then, of course, it's a little bit cooler on the coasts, 64 in Newport Beach, 62 in Laguna Beach, and 64 in San Clemente. So not ideal beach weather, but we are going to be getting that sunshine and warm weather back in the coming weeks, um, just in time for the summer season. And going into the general Southern California forecast, again, mild, moderate temperatures, pretty great weather. Um, but if you are looking for some of that heat, go ahead and head to Palm Springs. That's where you're going to see 98 degree temperatures. And since Coachella and Stagecoach are over, um, you'll beat that desert crowd and you'll have a great weekend. And also, if you're looking for the cooler temperatures, head to the coast. Again, it's pretty cool there. 63 in Santa Barbara, 66 in Avalon, 61 in Oceanside, 66 in San Diego. And of course, inland over here, 72 degrees, perfect temperatures in Los Angeles and Anaheim. And now looking at the five-day forecast in orange, um, today is going to be one of the warmer days of the week. It's going to go up to 75 degrees and like I mentioned we're going to have some of that cloud coverage and that those clouds are here to stay for the next couple of days. Temperatures are going to cool down just a bit dipping down to 67 tomorrow, 64 on Sunday and um, be prepared going into next week starting on Sunday. There is a chance for showers so be prepared, have an umbrella, maybe a light jacket just in case. And it looks like it's going to be a cool Cinco de Mayo, but don't let that stop you from celebrating. Go to Taco Adobe in the circle, Albert Tacos, maybe have a drink, but remember, be responsible. If you drink O, don't drive O, call an Uber or a friend. And that's all I have for you in the Weather Center. I'm going to toss it over to Nick in sports. Thanks, Sabrina. You may want taco today, but we got hamburgers in the Sports Center today, plus some Ducks highlights. That's all coming up on the Best Campus Sports Show. We, we just, just finished dinner, dinner and it was time for homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. Finally, Finally we found, found his assignment. assignment. He rushed through it. I wonder if he even learned anything. I wasn't going to get it right, so I just wanted to get back to playing my video game. At least I'm good at that. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying try as hard a little as harder. I can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Here you'll get personalized recommendations practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Be ready for emergencies by registering your alternate phone numbers, cell phones, and email addresses at alertoc.com. You will receive alerts when an emergency occurs near your workplace or neighborhood. Welcome to the Best Campus Sports Show. I'm Nick Vieira. Our anchor from last week, Ian Decker, is currently being sued by all their Skyx schools for slander, so you're stuck with me today. The Anaheim Ducks, though, are not stuck and played again on Wednesday against the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers were leading the series 2-1 in the series, and it seemed like a must-win situation for the Ducks. Let's go right to the highlights. Oilers were ahead with this great goal from Drysdale and McDavid, but gets offset no with a nice feed to him from Raquel and puts it in. Next, Ryan gets off the superhuman, goes and scores just by whacking the stick of the Oilers defenseman. That's crazy. And then Ignite again, once again, I mean, you might as well just have Ryan gets off running all over these highlights to the great pass over to Jacob Silverberg for the game winning goal in overtime. What a great game. The Ducks, though, return to the Honda Center tonight 
They look to take a 3-2 series lead in a pivotal game five. The puck will drop at 6.30. In this week episode of Athlete of the Week, I personally highlighted the athlete in my own special way. Reporter me has a story. Hi, and welcome to this week's Athlete of the Week. You probably just saw me on camera. Aren't I handsome? Uh, today, we got Mitchell up here today to talk about uh, track and field. Yeah, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. You have a good uh, day today so far? I did. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's been nice. But what are you telling me tell about what uh, sport you do? I do a long jump. So I started doing a long jump when I joined uh, my sophomore year. I just, just kind of decided I want to do it since I like to jump. <laughs> I can jump pretty high uh, with basketball and all that stuff. Um, so I just wanted to kind of see if I could take that with the field, after the field, and see what I can do. I'm told that you broke a record maybe this past weekend? Yeah, this past weekend I did. Uh, the, my own personal record first, and then the Chapman record, the school record, yeah. That's incredible. Um, so we don't have a shot of this, but you uh, injured your foot. Uh, will you tell me about that a little bit? How did you injure it? Um, you know, it was overuse, I think. It's just over time. I was practicing a lot um, and intensely. Um, and I'm fortunate that it was my left foot because I jump off my right foot. So I don't think I would have been able to do what I did if it was on my right foot. Um, but I've just been dealing with a boot and walking around on crutches for the past few weeks, uh, trying to make it heal. So you're telling me you did the long jump with part, well, your foot being injured? Yeah, I did. Um, it, it didn't hurt that bad, which is great. I thought it was going to hurt a lot more, but um, you know, I pushed through it and was able to do, better, do well. I think it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think I'm, I'm glad I did. Well. So you become a uh, staple in Athlete of the Week to start doing competitions. Okay. Um, and we got a special one set up for us today. So if producer Michael Hilton had it all wrong, I want you to do something I'm good at. I'm going to do something you're good at. Okay. So you're going to try and eat a in and out double-double <laughs> okay. while I try to run around the track once. Sound fair? That sounds fair. All right. Let's get right to it. All righty. Should have stretched. And three, two, one, go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Should have got this ready. There's no way you got me done by now. Oh, it's a target. Oh. Why did I get gym membership? Oh, man. Oh, I'm winded. I don't want to forfeit. Why? <laughs> Why? Atmosphere. Atmosphere. Oh. That's really good though. Destruction. Oh. Why didn't we just pretend I did this? Why did I actually have to do it? This wasn't smart. Why? I'm gonna get laughed by a little girl. I think I'm the only one that has blue eyes in my family. I think my mom has green eyes, but. No one else has blue. Mm. <laughs> Done. Let's go another five. All right, let's go. You can do it! <laughs> That's that corner. No proof. Oh, yeah. Oh. No. I don't think so. You alright, man? Uh, it's okay, he does this all the time. Oh. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> oh, good. So, did you enjoy your uh, part of the competition? I did, it was delicious. I bet. I'm gonna eat some delicious in a minute, but. <laughs> You've been watching Chapman News, Athlete of the Week, Nick Vieira. Well then, uh, back, to, back to me at the desk. <laughs> Thanks, me. We were informed minutes after interviewing Mitchell that he was voted as Kayak Track and Field Athlete of the Year. That would have been helpful to know before we interviewed him. The playoffs are coming. The playoffs are coming. The playoffs are coming. Four Panther teams have made it to the postseason. I could not be more pumped up. Let's take a look. First up will be the men's tennis team against the number one seed, Pomona Pitzer, at 1 p.m. Then the diamond will be full of Panthers this afternoon. Someone should tell Dodie, because he loves Panthers. So I'm going to grab the peanuts that I'm allergic to and eat them. While I enjoy watching softball play, the top seed Laverne at two. Then I'll keep that game going 
on my phone while I take in the baseball game at Hart Park where Chapman will take on Redlands as the second seed. Women's Lacrosse will have their toughest challenge yet to take down the Skyhawks' best in team, Claremont Mudscripts. That will be the championship game for the conference. That's all for me. It's been an incredible five semesters, and I gotta say, I haven't been that sore that in the five years that I am today after that run. Let's do, although now, let's um, go ahead and toss it over to Tori Edgar in Entertainment. Tori, what's the story? You know, Nick, I would be in the same boat if you were. If I did that run, I would be sore too. Coming up in entertainment, Hollywood writers avoided a major crisis for the entertainment industry. Plus, Miley Cyrus now opening up about her past and getting cleaned. Stay tuned. I'm Tori Edgar, and you're watching Chapman News. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above Bye. average four-legged homie, and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. Follow your dreams. Chapman University. History, philosophy, peace studies, languages. Study abroad and explore the world. Become a global citizen. The Wilkinson College at Chapman University. Invest your humanity. Lead. Welcome back to Chapman News. Hey, Wolfie, how was Guardians of the Galaxy? You told me you were going to see it last night? Michael, I tried my best to get tickets for the pre-screening last night, but they sold out so quick. I had to settle with, I got a ticket for Sunday. That's where I'll be Sunday, checking out Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, uh, I actually plan on seeing it today with a girl. Michael, hopefully with a girl. That's a shock. Michael, dude, who's well, can this you girl, say? man? Have I met her yet? I mean, I mean, my, my, mom, my mom's in town this week, so I, I figured I'd just go see it with her, you know? Okay. Well, um... Anyways, let's see what's going else, what's going on in the rest of the entertainment world. Thank you, Wolfie and Hope. Hope, have a great time with your mom. <laughs> Hollywood breathed a big sigh of relief early Tuesday morning after the Writers Guild of America and the studios managed to agree on terms for a new three-year contract. This also meant no strike by the WGA. The deal includes residual increases, better contributions to the WGA's health insurance plan, and new rules to account for compensation issues for shorter seasons of TV series. I guess you could call that a Hollywood ending. The MTV Movie and TV Awards are coming up this weekend. This is the first time the show will include television in its categories, even though it's MTV. Some of the top nominees are Get Out and Beauty and the Beast for Movie of the Year. Stranger Things and This Is Us are both up for Show of the Year. Some of the new categories this year include Best Kiss, Tear Jerker, Next Generation, and Trending. Get Out tops the film nominations at seven total, while Stranger Things leads for TV with four nominations. The ceremony is this Sunday at 5 p.m. from Shrine Auditorium in LA. Adam Devine will be taking a break from his acting job to host. Guess he really is a workaholic. Here's a peek of what to expect this weekend. Yeah, your popcorn here, your hot, hot, buttery, fresh popcorn. Hi, guys. I'm Adam Devine, and I'm hosting the biggest party of the year, the MTV Movie and TV Awards. Now, who here wants to see TV and movies hook up? to get this party popping, popping, popping. Yep, yep, that's how I planned it. Miley Cyrus graced the cover of Billboard magazine this week and she opened it up about her wild past and her risque behavior. She says those days are behind her. She told Billboard she hasn't smoked in three weeks and is completely clean. This, ki uh, this time she came out because of her desire to change. The actress and singer explained she wants to surround herself with people who make her want to be better and more open. She also got candid talking about her relationship with actor Liam Hemsworth. The two broke off their engagement in 2013 but have now reconciled. Cyrus says, we had to refall for each other. 
Her new song, called Malibu, from her untitled album, is a love ballad to Hemsworth. Ed Sheeran just released a new music video yesterday for his song, Galway Girl, off his latest album, Divide. The music video stars actress Saoirse Ronan. The video appears to be shot from Sheeran's perspective as a two to go to a pub, dance, and also surprise some unsuspecting locals. Above all, it pays tribute to Ireland. One note that has people talking in that video is Ronan is seen inking a tattoo on Ed Sheeran's arm that reads Galway Girl. Instead, in actual real life, it says Galway Grill, which made Sheeran laugh. He said, I'm kind of proud of her. That's something I would do. That is your very latest in entertainment, and that's a wrap on my Chapman News on Air Experience. I'm Tori Edgar, now back to the desk. Thanks, Tori. Log on to our website, chapmannews.tv, to see all of our episodes, Chapman Newsies bios, and top headlines. And make sure you also follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Chapman News, Twitter and Instagram at Chapman News, and YouTube at youtube.com slash Chapman News. Reporting for the final time from the Chapman News desk, I'm Wolfie Tash. And I'm Michael Oflink. Thank you for joining us. And a quick shout out to Sierra Goodhart. Glad to have you in the studio today.